Hi everybody, welcome back. In this video, I wanna talk about how to build a social media marketing plan. Now there are four major forms of social media influence. Number one is digital real estate. So that's where you show up, how pervasive you are in the digital sphere. Number two is connection. So that's people and followers. Number three is content. What kind of content do you put out in the world? What's the format? What value do you deliver? And number four is engagement. So that's how you interact with your audience. So here are the nine steps for building a social media marketing plan. Number one, a brand audit. You want to do an analysis of your current state. So that's on the four topics that I just mentioned, which is real estate. So where are you digitally? What platforms are you on? Um, what social media real estate do you have? Also content. Uh, what are you currently doing? What kind of content are you putting out? Is that content working? Is it not working? Is your brand consistent? Is your brand voice, your personality, your design, is that consistent? Also connections. So who are your current followers? What's your audience? And finally engagement. So what's your current engagement? How are you interacting with those followers that you're connected to? Number two, you want to do a competitive audit. So an analysis of your competition. Who is your competition? Who's your close in competition, meaning people just like you? Who's your stretch competition or people who are bigger or more successful than you are? Where are they now? What platforms are they on? What kind of content are they putting out? What's successful? What's working for them? What's not? Who's their target audience? Who are they influencing? What's their engagement look like? All those things, those four major things I talked about at the beginning of the video, you want to evaluate those things and look at where they're being successful and mirror that behavior. There's no shame in mirroring successful behavior of your competitors. It doesn't mean you have to copy them or try to be like them, but you can look at what they're doing and how they're doing it and learn from that. Number three is you wanna look at your customer avatar. Who is it that you wanna reach? What problem is it that you're trying to solve? How can you solve it for them? How can you do it different? How can you do it better? The most important thing to find out is where does your customer hang out? Where do they congregate? How do they communicate? Do they communicate in the real world, in the online world? Do they use forums? What kind of platforms do they use? Where do they hang out? And what do they do there? So number four, next, you wanna decide on a content platform. You wanna decide what is the right content platform? What's the kind of right content for your brand? If you're in the creative field, is that visual content? If you're in the strategy field, is that written content? Um, video content is the hardest kind of content to produce. Podcasting is a little bit easier. Writing is probably the easiest when it comes to production. You can produce content in blog form and podcasts, articles, videos, newsletters, imagery, infographics, um, physical appearances, so guest appearances. You can show up on discussion boards or communities. You can write lead magnets or downloadable PDFs or white papers. You can produce eBooks. There's a whole lot of different platforms that you can deliver content on. So you wanna decide what's the best platform for your content. So number five is developing a content strategy. So that is a strategy for the actual development of the content. After you've decided what form it's gonna take, you have to decide how you're actually gonna create it. So who's going to be the person to create it. Do you have a team for that? Do you do it yourself? You want to develop your calls to action. So you're going to have that content, but it's going to drive people somewhere. So where is it going to take people? You could say that 50% of your content is going to drive people to your blog. Maybe 20% is going to drive to a products page or 25% could be curated content of other people's stuff that's just building up perception of your brand as being a thought leader. You get a 5% that's related to HR. So, you know, building your, your company or your brand culture, acting as a new employee pipeline. The one thing you want to remember that you do absolutely is you have to publish consistently. Number six is you want to create a content posting calendar. So that's when does the content come out and where does it come out? So does it come out on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn, whatever? You have to decide on the platform and also decide on the actual frequency. So what dates and times this content's gonna be posted and you have to create a calendar for that and make sure that you stick to it again consistently. You also wanna think about automation. So are you gonna use an automation platform like uh, Hootsuite or if then if this then that so I T T T 
to automate your posting of content. Number seven is measurement and analytics. So when you're doing all this stuff, you want to also measure how effective it is. So using Google Analytics or Hootsuite Analytics or YouTube Analytics, you want to dive into and find how people are interacting with your content, where they're going, how much interaction and engagement there is. You can use a, a, a website called Owly, so O-W.ly, to create mini links that are then trackable. So you can create, when people click those links, you can go back to Owly and see some analytics on how people, where they're coming from, where they're going, in terms of any links that you post. And you can create custom reports from that. So one of the things you want to keep in mind is that you want to set a calendar to review on a regular basis your analytics for how your content and your social media efforts are performing. Number eight, you want to look at the return on investment of your social media marketing plan. So what are you actually getting out of it? And you look at this in terms of quantitative and qualitative. Qualitative are kind of the soft metrics. So things like engagement or feedback or brand loyalty or brand awareness. Quantitative are more metrics based, so more numbers based um, hard facts of how you're getting a return on your investment. So things like site traffic and shares and followers and actual sales and page views, so duration of views or bounce rates, um, Google ranking, things like that are quantitative. So you want to make sure that you're analyzing your social media efforts in terms of that kind of ROI. And finally, number nine is test and refine. So you want to make sure that you're looking at your analytics and then you're going back and looking at your social media efforts and you're refining them. So what's working? What's not working? What can you change? What can you make better? You want to have learnings from your efforts and no social media marketing plan is ever static. It never stands still. It never stays the same forever. So you have to go back and you have to test and refine and then implement those changes. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video on the nine steps to building a social media marketing plan. And if you did, please hit subscribe below so you can see my videos when they come out. And if you need help with your brand strategy or brand design or your creative career, reach out to me at philipvandusen.com and let's talk about how we can help you reach your business goals or your professional aspirations. And with that, thanks again for watching and bye for now.